I have a question for you about Bruce Willis. First came Die Hard 1 in 1988. They have already killed one hostage. And a hard man to kill. Bruce Willis. Die Hard. 2 in 1990. Was what you expected? No. This is just the beginning. On July 4th, Die Harder. Bruce Willis. Three in 1995. In a John McTiernan film, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Four in 2007. And five in 2013. Here's that question Do you get the message? Bruce Willis is hard to kill. And a hard man to kill. No matter what you throw his way, he's not going to die. That's Hollywood. In real life, dying isn't hard, it's easy. In the movies, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like Bruce Willis, continually avoids death. In real life, he has a heart attack and becomes a vegan. Steak, that's what a man eats. Selling that idea that real man eat meat. Serious man food. But you got to understand that's marketing. And like all of us, he wants to extend his precious life. But he's going to lose it anyway. Because dying is easy. The Terminator's coming for him, for Bruce Willis. is cutting down human beings at a rate of 150,000 every day and a whopping 54 million every year. Out of that difficult news about actor Bruce Willis, his family revealing he has been diagnosed with aphasia. The shocking news revealed today by his family, the man whose movies have banked eight billion plus at the box office is stepping away from Hollywood. A brain disorder impacting his cognitive abilities. The 67 year old known for his quick wit and wry humor is now stepping away from his career. You heard of Bruce Willis? I have heard of Bruce Willis. Do you know who he is? Mm -hmm. What's he done? Movies. Do you know what's happened to him recently? I don't know what's happened to him recently. And unfortunately, with there is no known cure to aphasia. The Die Hard series was based on a 1979 novel by Roderick Thorpe called Nothing Lasts Forever. And there's the big problem for many. If you believe nothing lasts forever, you're mistaken. God lasts forever because he's the very source of life. He offers what the Bible calls a living hope for Bruce Willis, for the two million Americans that have the same disease, and for you and me. So, what are you going to do about your impending death? Are you going to fight it or roll over and die easy? You say, but how do you fight death when it's inevitable? That's what we're going to talk about. Do you believe in evolution? Or do you think God created man in his own image, male and female? I believe in evolution. Okay, so, why is there death and disease in evolution? It's just something that naturally happens in life. There's life and there's death. There's a beginning and there's an end. And Are you afraid of death? No. Have you ever attempted suicide? I mean, <laughs> yes, I have. Why? Uh, bad times, bad times, just bad circumstances, bad environment. It does a lot to a person. Are you done with that? I've, I'm a lot better. I'm a lot better. My mindset has completely changed from the way I was back then. Are you going to heaven when you die? I hope so, yes. Why do we die according to evolution? Survival of the fittest. Yeah, but no one's fit to survive. We're all dying, so nobody survives. Survive the longest, I should say. Survival of the longest? This is a new evolutionary theory? <laughs> yeah, I guess. But, you know, nobody really wants to die, you know. But death is inevitable, of course. Because there's no such thing as immortal life. Are you sure? From what I know, yes. Do you ever read the Bible? I have not read the Bible. Do you know that it makes a fantastic claim in the truest sense of the word? This is what the Bible says. Jesus Christ has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. That's past tense. Like if you say death is inevitable, you'll do nothing about it. Arnold Schwarzenegger did a, uh, an interview recently where he was angry at death. Well, that's like standing on a freeway and being angry that a truck's heading for you best to try and figure out how to get out of the way of the truck. And have you heard the Bible verse, the wages of sin is death? I have, yeah. I can't say that I'm a good person. I don't think anybody's ever completely good. Your definition of good is different than mine. Do you think you're a good person morally? Yes. Okay, I'm going to try and change your mind about that. 
And the way I'm going to do it is give you a standard that's above your own standard. It's God's standard, the Ten Commandments. Are you familiar with them? Yes. Okay. How many lies have you told in your life? A lot. And what do you call someone who tells lies? A liar. So what are you? I'm a liar. Hard to say, isn't it, about yourself? Yeah. Do you still think you're a good person? Yes. Have you ever stolen something in your whole life, even if it's small? Mm-hmm. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yeah. Do you love your mum? I do. Would you ever use her name as a cuss word? No. No, you'd never do that. It would so dishonor her and be disrespectful. But you have taken the holy name of God, the name that godly Jews won't even speak or write down. It's so holy and used it in place of the S word to express mm-hmm. disgust. That's called blasphemy. Very serious. In the Old Testament, they actually punished by death. Do you still think you're a good person? Yes. Can I get a little personal here, but I have to. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Yes. Yes. Is sex out of marriage? Yes. Yeah. So here's the summation, guys. I'm not judging you. This is for you to judge yourself, okay. to see how you're going to do on Judgment Day. But you've both told me that you're lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterers at heart. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to face God on Judgment Day. If he judged you by those commandments, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? He forgives everyone for their sins who repent, doesn't he? Everyone no. Repent? If you're in front of a judge and you've committed very serious crimes and you say, Judge, I did commit the crimes, but I want to tell you I'm really sorry and I'll never do it again. He's going to say, well, you should be sorry. Of course you shouldn't do it again. You're going to jail. So being sorry and saying you won't do it again, which is what repentance is, won't get you out of man's court and it won't get you out of God's court either on Judgment Day. You need something else. Well, then wouldn't everybody be guilty in a sense because everybody breaks the commandments? That's exactly right. We've all earned our wages. He doesn't judge. He doesn't judge? God doesn't judge. Oh, I think he looks more like morally, like your heart, if your heart and your soul is pure. I don't think... Do you know what you've just done? You've just broken the first and the second of the Ten Commandments. Do you know what they are? No. I did it before I was a Christian. I created a false god in my mind. I created a god that had no sense of justice or righteousness or truth, kind of like a teddy bear that I could snuggle up to. That was a figment of my imagination, the place of imagery. That God was non-existent. The God that's revealed in Scripture is so serious about sin, he's given us the death sentence. I've got a question for you. If your father gave you a brand new Lamborghini, okay, because he loves you, what is your obligation towards him? Everything. Yeah, it's like, Dad, this is so kind. Whatever you desire, I'm going to do. He says, well, I desire you stay, you stay on the right side of the road. You don't drink and drive and don't text when you drive. So if someone gives you something, you're obligated. You've already got it. It's a gift. But you're obligated morally to do what they want. What does God require of you? He's given you life. What's his requirement? To do good in the world, I guess. What do you think God requires of you? Just to follow his path. And I don't... Boy, pretty good. This is it. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. That's your obligation to God, to love Him with heart, mind, soul, and strength. But we haven't. We've used His name as a cuss word. We haven't been grateful. We haven't been thankful. We've just walked with our backs turned to Him. So you're in big trouble. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So what can you do to be saved? How can you be made right with God? Do you know? No, I do not. I'm going to share the gospel with you, and this is how you can know that you pass from death to life. We broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus paid the fine. Just before he died, he said, it is finished. And that's a weird thing to say before you die. It is finished. But he was saying the debt has been paid. We broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus paid the fine. Maria, if you're in court and you've got speeding fines, someone else can pay them, and the judge can let you go even though you're guilty. He said, there's a lot of speeding fines here, but they're all paid by someone else. You're out of here. Even though you're guilty, you walk because someone paid you a fine. And even though you and I are guilty before God of serious crimes worthy of the death sentence, He can let us walk, He can let us live forever, He can take the death sentence off us, all because Jesus suffered and died on that cross and rose again on the third day. And all you have to do to find everlasting life, it's so simple, a little child can understand it, is turn from your sin, it's called repentance. You don't call yourself a Christian and keep lying and stealing and blaspheming, that's just deceiving yourself. And then you trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. You're like someone who's going to jump out of a plane 10,000 feet, and this is their plan. They're going to flap their arms and try and save themselves. To that person, you and I would say, don't do that. Just trust the parachute. 
So don't try and save yourself on Judgment Day. It's not going to work. You've got a multitude of sins like the rest of us. Just simply transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. Is this making sense? Yes. And the minute you do that, you've got the promise from the God who cannot lie that he'll forgive your sins in an instant and grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Now, here's how you can know. If you've got the word of a governor, that's a fairly high word. Word of a president, pretty high word. Word of a king, real high word. But you and I have got the word of God, his word, and he cannot lie that if you repent of your sins, he'll forgive you instantly and grant you everlasting life. And here's Here's the touching the heater bar. He'll cause you to be born again with new heart and new desires. God will make you brand new on the inside so you love God with all your heart and want to do that which is right rather than that which is wrong. And that's when you pass from death to life and you know you're saved because of the experience of the new birth. Is this making sense? Yes. You're going to think about what we talked about? Yes. Can I be personal with you guys? Yes. I want to embarrass you? No. You having sex? Currently, no. What do you mean currently? Currently? I'm <laughs> not the moment. I mean, not today. Not today. Yeah. Right. So, so that'll, that'll stop you coming to Christ. You've got a choice to make today. The pleasures of sin for a season, but death and hell, or everlasting life as a free gift from God through repentance and faith in Jesus. If you were to die today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell. There are two things you must do to be saved. You must repent and trust in Jesus. When are you going to do that? Now. You serious? Yes. Can I pray for you? Mm -hmm. Father, I pray for Maria. Thank you for her open heart today, her honest heart, where she's confessed and forsaking her sins and trusting in you. Grant her repentance and she'll pass from death to life because she's trusting in the word of the living God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today will be as real for you as you are with God. You can leave here and say that was interesting and not open your Bible and not bother to pray or seek God. But if today you get by yourself and just say, God, thank you for, for the gospel, for the cross, and you open his Bible and begin reading it, that'll be like nourishment to you. It's like a little baby has a desire for milk. You should have a desire for God's word to see what he says. And a good rule to go by is no Bible, no breakfast, no read, no feed. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Make sure you check out the Living Waters podcast and this. It's everything I've ever learned in 50 years of apologetics and evangelism. Get your copy of the Evidence Study Bible and check out the starter kit while you're there at livingwaters.com. If you enjoyed this video on Bruce Willis, you'll love the one we produced on Dwayne The Rock Johnson's faith. You've got to see it. Click here now.